oh my God, a third of the population's out of work. No, we're just taking a break. Don't go there. Because when the restaurants open, they're gonna need people to work there. Hey everybody, welcome to Stamp of Approval. Thank you for joining us today. You know, during the pandemic, we're providing many podcast episodes with a variety of topics with some of the very best professionals in their fields so that we can help you during these uncertain times. We will get through this. You have to create a plan for yourself, your business, and take action. I'm Kristen Stampini. My husband and I own multiple small businesses. In 2017, we opened our virtual assistant business where we help small business owners hire, train, and staff administrative assistants at a very affordable price. We have a real estate business, and my real estate career actually began during the financial and real estate crisis back in 2007. And during that time, I was personally bankrupt and broke. Over the years, we were able to build a, a million dollar real estate team and currently we have a small real estate team, a real estate brokerage, of course our virtual assistant business, a real estate investment company, and I'm a real estate coach for the Craig Proctor Systems. So today I'd like to welcome Dr. Mitchell Kirshner. He's a naturopathic doctor and he's been in the health field for about 32 years. Having completed nutrition work and going on to receive his license for massage therapy, he realized there must be a profession combined with the two fields of healthcare along with his interest in exercise. That's what led him to seek and find naturopathic medicine. After graduation, he started a private practice in New Mexico, then was offered to instruct at the satellite campus of the University of Mexico in the nursing program, Biology Science Department. His instruction began with teaching nutrition, and then he taught anatomy and physiology, and also taught exercise physiology to the massage program students family and a desire to pursue more education in the culinary world is what led him back to South Florida where he currently resides today. He has the skills to teach and motivate people to learn as a result to his passion for health and human body. So today we're really going to dig in to different things that he recommends and topics uh, of what people are going through and how we can get through these uncertain times. So welcome, Dr. Keshner. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks so much, Kristen, for having me and for having this podcast. And, you know, I know that some of your purpose behind this is really just to lend a helping hand. That's right, so that's right. We'll be going I, through some of that today. Like, I, I'm just so thrilled to do the same thing. Yeah, and I love, love, love that you have decided to come on here and to also offer, you know, to people during these uncertain times uh, to offer to people, you know, what you have, obviously, with so much education and experience, it's, it's going to be amazing. So why don't we dig right into there? I think one of the things that I loved that you were talking about is, you know, organized home, organized mind. And why is that important today? If I may, I'm going to take one minute here and sure. give you my interpretation of what naturopathic medicine is. So Absolutely. you'll understand, and the listeners will understand, where this conversation is coming from. I deemed a term where naturopathic medicine is a bridge. It's the bridge between the wisdom of nature and the knowledge of science. So what that means is we have known for eons that garlic is good for us. Right? We've been eating it, we've been rubbing it on us, we've been all kinds of things with garlic, same with cayenne and ginger. These, these so-called kitchen spices have medicinal value, the wisdom of nature. Now, where we bring that together is the knowledge of science. Now I can tell you, based on our experience, based on our laboratory testing and results findings, that what garlic is good for you is that it's an anticoagulant, it can lower blood pressure, it can stimulate immune function, and I can even tell you how. There's so much data and research. So that's why I say when we say something like 
just breathe, right? And breathing has a list of physiology behind it. If I just said, do you breathe? Well, we all know it feels better when I breathe. But if I sit here and tell you, do you know that three deep breaths can lower your blood pressure, can alter your blood pH, can literally uh, dilate your pupils to al allow them to relax? All this from three deep breaths. Wow. So this is how we combine the knowledge of science with the wisdom of nature. That's awesome. We talked about... Um breathing on a couple of different podcasts but didn't get the knowledge right there that you just provided and that's incredible just with three deep breaths doing that right now i'm telling you if we were to take your blood pressure before we start most people will be a little bit higher depending on how stressed they are three deep breaths and give it just a few minutes afterwards i will show you and demonstrate time and time again your blood pressure will come down now if so, we Breathing, is there a certain way that you should breathe for this? That yes, there is what we call chest breathing and then we call it diaphragm breathing. Both are good. Breathing is always good, <laughs> right? Um, what we have found with research actually that when people get stressed out, they do what we call shallow chest breathing. It's like your lung, you have three lobes on the right side and two lobes on the left to make room for the heart. If you just, that kind of, that's shallow chest breathing, you're not filling the lobes in the bottom part of the lung. Now, given this particular virus, it has a propensity for the lungs. It's a respiratory illness. One of the things we know is that it doesn't do great in a high aerobic situation or a high oxygen situation. Deep breaths, not only from the chest, but also from the belly. You know how you can, push your belly out, you're inflating your belly. What that's doing is it's causing the muscle of the diaphragm to pull the bottom lobes of the chest down, the lungs, and inflate those as well. There are other bacterial infections that have a, a, a draw to the lungs, but they're what we call anaerobes. And anaerobes meaning that they're some kind of a pathogen that does not do well in a high oxygen environment, anaerobic. That's why if you go to aerobics class, you're, take, you're, you're working hard, you're breathing hard, you're taking in more oxygen. That's why we call it aerobics. Deep breath, hold for a few seconds. Gently let it out through your pierced lips and watch your blood pressure come down. Now, the other feature to deep breathing properly is literally, and we've done this too, we can alter your blood pH. When you're, when you're stressed and you're not breathing, property, you're doing chest breathing, shallow chest breathing, your pH becomes more acidic. This can, we can measure this time and time again. That acidic environment actually makes it more stressful for the body. Wow. So something as simple as these deep breaths, not only lowers your blood pressure, but can alter your blood pH. And this is all stuff that is, we like to say in science, in the world of science, it's something that can be reproducible reproduced, replicated, and proven. These are simple things. So that is one way, Kristen, that I like to demonstrate how naturopathic medicine is that bridge. We want to tell you, go and sit outside, get fresh air and sunshine. That's the wisdom. Now the knowledge is, do you know that vitamin D? Well, vitamin D, we have it in our body, but it's usually in an inactive state. Sunshine, with the UV lights, and we're not talking hours here. I mean, this can happen anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes of sun exposure, activates your vitamin D. Now in the nutrition world, vitamin D is it's kind of a misnomer because it has certain activities that match that of a hormone. So vitamin D, hormone D, kind of they both, they both have activities, but it's inactive until you get some sunlight. And again, fair skin people, 15 minutes a day. A little bit more, uh, your olive skin, the darker skin, 20 to 30 minutes a day. That's all you need. So let me ask you a question because talking about vitamin D, I, I love it because for me, when I went and got it tested, you know, at Hippocrates, it was a 17, okay, where I started. Now I live in South Florida, okay? Mm -hmm. 
but I've yeah. also had, um, you know, different skin issues because of the sun. So I've sure. tried to stay out of the sun. So it seems like it's a catch 22. So one of the things that I did is I took double dosage uh, shots of vitamin D. Okay. And then obviously to try to get it up. Right. So I think it was after four dosage of double D shots, I got it up to like 35. Okay. Uh, because I know how important vitamin D is, right? It can make you depressed. It's, I mean, a lot That's of different right. things, right? That's right. Vitamin D. But well, let, me, let, me just ex- yeah. let me just explain. The, the, the D shots, just like a D supplement, they're okay. But there's something missing. It's like, I, I like to use the example of aspirin. Have you ever taken an aspirin? Sure. Do you know where it came from? Do you know that it was originally extracted from the willow bark? There's a willow branch, a willow tree that grows near streams. And I've done this. I've actually harvested it where you chop off a couple of the limbs, you peel the bark, and then you dry it. And then you can either pound it into a powder or put it into a tincture or just put it in and make a tea out of it. Well, that's where aspirin originally came from. It's called salicylic acid, which is the active ingredient in aspirin. Laboratories today, science, they just figured out a way to make salicylic acid. But you'll notice there's a side effect to taking too much aspirin. It's called stomach ulcers. You, the only side effect to drinking too much willow bark tea is having to go to the bathroom a lot. Because <laughs> there's a lot of protective mechanisms in the rest of the bark rather than just the acid, just that extract. With the vitamin D, the other thing is there are things that are going on with the sun hitting your skin. Now, we talk about skin issues. One of the things that we have found over the last 40 to 50 years is as we have become more industrialized, we are spending more time indoors. Then we go out on the weekend to try to get some sunshine or do something outside. And just going from your house to the car or from the car to a building, you know, it's something, but it's not the same as sitting outside 15, 20, 25 minutes. And if you do that regularly enough, we actually have a little cell in your skin called a melanocyte. Melanin, you might have heard of. Melanin is what gives your skin that color to it. Well, melanocytes are the cells that give you that melanin, which acts as a sunscreen. But you don't activate them if you only go out in the sun once a week. So if you're sitting indoors all day long, every day, except for when you're driving, going to your car or going to a store or whatever, You never really give the cells time to to get active. Going outdoors on a regular basis, 10, 15, 20 minutes, like we used to, is enough to get the cells going. Once they start producing their melanin, telling you it's the internal sunscreen for our bodies, but it doesn't happen once a week. So lack of vitamin D does what? Well, like you mentioned, vitamin D is is required and necessary for a variety of things. One is normal, good bone health. It does play a role in mental health. That's why you ever heard of SAD, seasonal affective disorder or seasonal affective disharmony? I like to call it a disharmony because you go outside and you get a little fresh air and sunshine and you do a little activity. All of a sudden, you're not sad anymore. There's also standard American diet, but that's another part of the conversation. But vitamin D also acts like a hormone, which means it stimulates other pathways. It helps with calcium activity in the bones. Calcium is also required for muscle activity. Calcium is also required for normal heart function. So there's all these. See, the thing about a hormone is that there's a whole cascade of events that happen here. It doesn't do just one thing. That's why I always tell people, if you're thinking of doing hormone replacement therapy, you need to work with a professional. Do not try to take this on yourself. We are, it's such an interactive system in the body that people think, well, I read this article and I'm just going to go do some you know, progesterone cream. Ah, just be careful with that. Same thing with vitamin D. So where do you think the vitamin D level should be? And are, what percentage of people are deficient of vitamin D? You know, I, I got to tell you, Kristen, that's, I I get those kind of questions and I always tell people, do you ever notice if you go to two different labs or three different labs that they have different ranges? Oh yeah. Like Hippocrates is really high. 
I mean, they want 70 to 100, which is extremely high, where others are talking about 35, 50 or whatever. So I'm just, I'm just curious for your opinion because you're exactly right. And that's why I even asked that. Yeah. My, when I answer this kind of questions, when someone says, well, how much water do I need? How much vitamin D do I need? How much calcium do I need? I don't know. Yeah. Your body knows. If you're taking in the right stuff, your body will know. If you're not interfering, if I'm telling you, you look like you're on the slightly more uh, lighter skinned tone. I am. If you go outside for 15 minutes a day, take a break, have a cup of tea. I've made a, I've made a routine out of these last couple of weeks, which we're going to get into why this has been such a great time in our life, really. But I've been taking a, making a point of at least five days a week to go about 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now it's going to be like 3 or 3.30. Just go sit outside for 30 minutes. I have a darker skin complexion, but I sit outside. I didn't start with 30 minutes. I started with 15. Then I went to 20. Then I went to 30. And I just turn on my phone on mute, but I turn on the alarm. And I just sit and let the quiet. I breathe. I relax. How many people do we know have a computer? Yeah. It's about right? Now, we push this little button on the computer that says refresh, reboot. What we need to do is understand that our bodies need the same kind of thing and not just once in a while. We need the reset, the reboot, the refresh. That's that 15 or 20 minutes of sitting outside, doing some breathing, sipping some water, some tea or some lemon water, whatever, and taking in fresh air and sunshine. Those are two of the tenants that will get you healthy. When you ask how much vitamin D do you need? I don't know. Your body your, will respond, you'll be able to tell. Your body will respond, your, your body, body will know. Respond. That's right. It now, the whole, well, right? If you, yeah, and if you look at the levels and the rates and increase of skin cancer, notice okay. when it really started with the industrial age. As we were spending more time indoors and then would go out for those occasional weekend warrior type of things, we started noticing an increase in skin cancers, right? And, and an increase of other cancers as well, but we'll stick with the skin for right now. By not giving our body the time to prepare, to protect, we then expose it and make it vulnerable. And that ties right into our conversation with today, Kristen, is it, how are we dealing with this? You know, when I, I like to use the reference do you see the cup as half full or half empty? Right? And I ask people, what's the difference? If it's the same level of fluid, is it half full or half empty? And I like to say, it depends on are you filling it or are you emptying it? If you're drinking from it, it's half empty. If you're filling it, it's half full. I love that. Okay. Now, how are you filling your cup these days in this time? See, we call it a crisis. I call it an opportunity. My cup is half full. I just released, I just launched my new website, new brand, new logo. Like you said earlier, this was a time when you just started your business, having, got, having been broke. This is a time when people are given the time to take a good look at their life, to really reflect. I'm gonna, I, I shared something. I, I was thinking about it this morning, knowing that we were going to talk. And I thought, what, what is this whole thing? We're, we're being quarantined. Well, you can call it that. I mean, I don't have to stay in my home. I could leave. I can go to the store. I can go get gas. I can go take a walk someplace. But we're being told to stay in. To me, that's the cup half empty. If I wanted to say the cup was half full, I would, be, I would think of it more like I'm being given the chance to refresh, to relax, to kind of rejuvenate myself and come up with some new ideas of what I want to do here, where, where I want to go with my life. We're being given this opportunity. This is a time and the beautiful part of this first time in human history that we know of that everyone on the planet is in the same boat. That's right. The one thing that I love about this, and I'm going to say this, I love this about this virus and this opportunity. The virus is doing something. It's trying to teach us something. Did you notice that the virus doesn't care what gender you are? It doesn't care what religion you are. It doesn't care what border you live behind. It doesn't care. What it's showing us is that we're all human 
and we're all in this together right. all around the globe this is a i'm i refer to this time as a global event of transformation this is a time when we have an opportunity to find peace with each other i understand things like wars and things like that are kind of subsided for a little while fighting has dro has dropped some domestic challenges are there because people are starting to get used to having someone around all the time but there's this is a real opportunity for us to find that peace inside so this isn't like you're stuck inside this is the opportunity to go inside get to know who you are and find i that. totally agree with you but there's so many people that it's even hard for them to get out of bed sure sure and it is it's hard because number one they don't have it you know fortunately the stimulus checks just came out uh unemployment i know is still backed up some people a little bit of people are seeing that you know we have i don't even know right now but we could have up to 47 million unemployed okay up to 47 so that's like um 30 percent right 30% of our country. Anyways, so what do, what do the, you know, helping those people not be yep. too hard on themselves, right? Yep. Just do little things. Yes. And let's put something in perspective. We're talking about this has been going on for a month. Yeah. How long did the, the depression go on? Yeah. How long did wars go on? Yeah. We had World War I, World War II, Vietnam War. Yeah. These things went on for years. Right. We're talking one month here. That's one right. month. We're making this out to be doomsday. Right. And all I'm saying is put a little perspective in here. Right. I, I, look, I'm not taking away from anybody. I've lost clients. Some people said, I just can't do this right now. I'm going, this is the time you actually need it. But okay, take care of yourself. Call me when you're ready. But put it in perspective. It's one month. Now it may go on maybe one more it'll start to level off things will begin to return people will go oh back to work because our society is not going to stop work. from this no we're just taking, we're just a, taking a break That's so don't go there again because when the restaurants open they're going to need people to work there when the bars open well some of the bars are already open but when other stores are open they're going to need people to go back to work all of this is going to happen within the next month well, and the thing is, and that's, that's, you know, perfect what you're saying, because the, the, most of us have been affected. Okay. Obviously Absolutely. a few Amazon grocery stores have not. Okay. Sure. But most of us have been affected and some of us a lot more than others. Correct. But the thing is, is your mind is so important that you actually change your state of mind and it can happen like that. Okay. Exactly. And, exactly. and the thing is, is I'm like you and there's a lot of opportunity now. So I'm reflecting on myself. Okay. And also there's a lot of opportunity. I've been able to slow down and breathe and chase and change things in my business. I've been able to adjust things to make it better. Okay. But I also am very optimistic. And, you know, even if it's, don't be too hard on yourself during these times, but get up. Put on some makeup or what makes you feel good. Take a shower, take a walk. Like Dr. Mitchell was saying, you know, just be out in outside for 30 minutes. Now, I don't know if you saw, but the Midwest got snow, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw. But just getting okay. out. So what? So what? Put on an extra layer of clothes. Yeah, Go for a walk. Yes. All right. I'm going to give you a little example of what a day could look like. And this is generalized, right? So in the morning, almost every morning, I have about an hour and a half routine where I wake up, I do a little quiet breathing, get my day started. I begin to think about what's positive. What do I have to be grateful for? 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, right? Then I get up, wash my face, drink a cup of water. Then I go in the room and I do some stretching, some yoga. Because I really feel it's really important to have your body be active and limber, especially because we're doing so much sitting. And that usually takes me somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. If I'm feeling really motivated, I throw in a couple sit-ups and push-ups. Depends on the day. <laughs> right? 
Then I get up and I make a cup of tea and I go back and I do some reading for about 20 or 30 minutes. Something to fill my mind. Because you're right, Kristen. Probably the most important thing right now isn't what food you're eating. That's important, but not the most important. What's most important is what are your thoughts? What are you feeding this, your mind? Because if you're feeding it fear, you're going to get fear. That's right. There's an old parable, a Native American parable, where the child, the grandchild, asked grandpa about how do I deal with these thoughts in my head? And grandpa said, you have two wolves in your head, the evil wolf that wants to destroy everything and the good wolf that wants to make your life better. And they are in a fight. And the grandson said, well, grandpa, well, which one wins? And the grandfather said, the one you feed. If you feed the good wolf, if you feed the good thoughts, if you feed good actions and get up. I recently met a woman, 100 years old. I happened to be there. I was outside. She was walking her dog. She had just gotten a dog nine months prior at 100 years old. And she looked very well dressed for herself. And I said, well, do you, do you dress like this all the time? She goes, every day I get up, I clean myself, I put on my clothes, I put on my makeup every day. I said, that's incentive. That's insp inspiration. So feed your mind, feed your body, right? So that's what I do in my morning. Then I go and I do some of my work. I'm working on a couple of projects. Then in my afternoon, I'm telling you, every day, almost 2.30, 3 o'clock, whatever, go sit outside, just refresh, take this time. Do you know that for the first time since where I'm living, I'm like really hearing the birds. I'm hearing calm. It feels calm, not like this crazy running around because that really tends to work on your body, physiology, your immunity, your cardiovascular system. All of these are affected by this constant running that we've been doing. That's right. we're, we're taking a break here. Doesn't mean stop. Don't misunderstand. Doesn't mean stop what you're doing. It just means slow down a little bit. There's a saying by somebody that I work with he says, slow down to go fast. Yeah. Take this time to slow down to figure out what can I do with this opportunity that we're given? What can I create? Is there a book in you? Is there a movie in you? Are there paintings that you've been wanting to do? Because one thing I can tell you, Kristen, this is an opportunity to get off of what we call one day, someday island called Someday Island. Someday I'll get to that book. Someday I'll write, I'll paint that next picture. we all have that. We all, we all did, right? We get so busy with trying to make it. Yeah. We're forgetting the most important thing is live it, yeah. right? So get off Someday Island, pick up that book. One thing you might want to do, which is a great opportunity, is start really going through your house and organizing. environment also leads to a clear mind if there's too much stuff around you don't realize it but subconsciously your mind takes in all that information so I challenge your listeners take an opportunity to really clear an area in their house like really clear have have minimal there and just sit with that for a little bit and see how that feels and then think about that drawer you've been high, you've been trying to duck away from, or you keep, we call them the junk drawers in the kitchen or whatever, right? Everything goes in there that can't find any place for anything else. Get rid of it. Clear these kind of things out. I would also suggest one of the other things to do, which is not only good for your brain, for your activities, right? But it also ends up being beneficial is make a list of all the projects around your house that you've been putting off probably for the last couple of years. I got a screen that's got a tear in it. I've got windows that probably I'd be able to see better if I just clean them. Like make this whole list and then go through the list and do them, check them off. And I would even suggest, let's say you make your list and say, I'm gonna do these on Tuesday. I'm gonna do this on Wednesday. So it's kind of like your job. You're, getting, you're putting yourself to work, improving your own life. Does it get any better? That's right. That's right. That's great. And what about inner family communication? Look, as many people are beginning to realize, 
we have a lot more families sticking around a lot more these days, right? I, I wanna clarify something first. One, there's a huge difference between talking and communicating, okay? Talking are just words. You're just saying, telling the weather. You're telling what's obvious. That's talking. Communicating has to do with what you're really thinking, what you're really feeling. It's that bridge between your heart and your mind, your heart and your brain. That's communicating, allowing someone to communicate, allowing kids to tell you what they're really feeling. That's interfamily communication. Letting them speak their word, letting them speak their mind, not telling them exactly what they have to do every single minute of every single day because you're not used to having them around. Then the flip side, having your kids understand that, look, you're not used to this either. Let's talk. And sometimes mommy or daddy, you know, I'm going to change the term here. We've been using the term social distancing. I think we're moving into physical distancing. It's okay to be social even during this. Having a little physical distance right now is just a safety measure, right? Same thing in the home. There are times when you need some physical distancing and it's okay to not feel guilty about saying, I need a break. I need to go in the other room and I ask you to not bother me for the next 15 minutes. Literally, and put a time limit on it. So that way they understand mommy needs a break or daddy needs a break and I can ask them the question I need to ask them in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So the interaction communication between families, you gotta talk with each other and you gotta tell everybody what's going on and let, the parents need to let their children talk and they need to let them express themselves. There's a way of expressing that gives somebody the freedom to really be who they are. And I'm telling you, it makes life a lot easier. Well, and, and the other things that are so stressful today, you know, for so many people is number one is obviously so many people possibly out of work. Another thing is, is they could be with, you know, if you have significant other or husband or a wife or whatever at home together, and both of you may be out of work or one may be working or both may be working. So that's yep. a new form, right? Yep. And then yep. also you've got your kids home, right? That you're not used right. to all the time yeah. and and they're and you're trying to get them either you're homeschooling them yourself or the schools are doing zoom meeting so all of that together what do you what do you say about all of that like what can people do yeah first of all let's come back to and i i'm going to just use it because it's a simple analogy is the cup half full or half empty what's your perspective how are you looking at things yes you may be out of work right now but think about this are you spending as much than you're usually spending are you going to stores and buying things that you may or may not really be needing, right? So there's been a, a look at, I've seen a couple of reports talking about people are not spending. So you're not making, but you're not spending. So you're kind of almost in the same place. You're not driving around as much, so you're not spending on gas. Chances are your car's not breaking down because you're not using it as much, right? I mean, I went to the store the other day and I walked. It's a quarter of a mile. I went to one place, went to the other. By the time I came back, it was almost a mile, but I walked. So all of a sudden, my car hasn't been turned on for two days. I haven't burned one ounce of gas or oil or anything else. That's number one. Number two, if you're not eating out, because you're still eating, but making food at home is somewhere between one quarter and one third the cost of eating out, depending on where you eat. Right? If you, if you know a couple of little tricks of how to eat with uh, with a budget in mind, right? So if I go out to eat, and I know this because I know that restaurants, or these, I've worked in a number of them, they have to charge about 30 to 40% over what it costs them to make. That means you're paying that. Now, if you're not paying that, if you're not eating out, then you're saving that money. So you go to the store, I buy a dozen eggs for $3, let's say. I can make three or four meals out of that with an onion and a little kale if I go out to breakfast, I'm going to spend $9, 10 11 $12. Okay. So I just spent $3 for a dozen eggs. So that's three or four meals or five meals out of that. I just saved $50 not going out to breakfast. Okay, right. cup of coffee. Where can you go for a quality coffee today that's not going to cost you three, four, five, six dollars You make it at home, it's $0.75. Cents. Same quality. 
just that you have to make it, not somebody else, right? So th there's that there's that balance of scale of spending and not spending. So when you, again, when you put that in perspective, that first of all, it's been a month, this is already starting to turn around, and it's just money you haven't spent. So you're, you still have those resources, hopefully. Now, this is also an opportunity to do some budgeting, to learn how to do some savings. I call them the, the, the jar system. I got this from one of my seminars where you're going to put a certain amount of money in this jar. This one's for savings. Certain amount of money in this jar. This one's for your, your vacation. Certain amount of money in this jar for tithing. Certain amount of money in this jar for your, your education. And when you start doing these kind of things, you realize maybe I'm not in as bad a shape as I thought. That's right. See, so the big thing here, Kristen, please, if nothing else comes across today's talk, which I hope a lot does, stop watching so much news. Yes. Stop, yes. stop listening to yes. so many of the reports because you'll notice they're all negative. Almost 99% of them are negative. Their numbers don't coincide with what's really going on. We live here in South Florida. Do you know that in Florida, there have been less than 600 deaths from this? That's right. Now, in a state of 20 million people, 600 deaths from something like this is a drop in the bucket. It's not a drop in the bucket to those people, but it's a drop in the bucket from the statistic standpoint. Get a sense of reality, all right? Use physical distancing. So I'm gonna leave you, uh, not leave you, but I'm gonna I get, share something. It's called CYB, CYB. First of all, cover your butt, all right? Cover your butt means take the proper precautions. If you go out, keep a little distance between you and, and other people. First of all, get over the fear. You, you don't just spread it by looking at somebody. You don't spread it by being within an arm's distance of them unless they cough, sneeze, or touch you, and it's been on them as well, all right? So just being around other human beings doesn't mean you're transferring a disease. There has to be fluid exchange. So if you keep a little distance, you keep the fluids away, okay? Not a problem. Cover your butt, protect yourself. Cover your brain. In other words, be careful who you're listening to and what you're listening to. Don't let those thoughts enter here because in amongst all the other fear that's going on and all the other stories and all the other statistics, it's just messing you up. It's not helping. So cover your butt, cover your brain. The third is count your blessings. If I ask you to look to the right and focus on something or look to the left and focus on something. Can you do both at the same time? No. So to the right is all the fear and the news. To the left is the fact that you have a home, you have a roof over your head. I guarantee you nobody's gonna come and throw you on the streets, not anytime soon, right? So you've got a roof, probably open the refrigerator, there's food in there. You flip a switch, there's lights that are gonna come on. Count your blessings. You turn a little knob and water comes out. Count your blessings. If you focus more in that direction, I'm not saying ignore the right. I'm just saying very spend very little time over there, but focus on your blessings and take, take that in. If you let that in, people say, what can I do to build my immune system? I'm going to tell you one thing. The best thing you could do is stop tearing it down. You tear it down by stress. You tear it down by junk food eating. You tear it down by sedentary lifestyle, by sitting around too much. You build it by positivity. I'm not saying ignore. I'm just saying it's all about percentage, right? 5% pay attention to what's going on. 95% take care of yourself and your family and your community. Yeah. That's the best thing we can do for this. Yeah, that's, that's great, great, great recommendations. So for what do you do exactly? Like if anybody wanted to, you know, learn more and everything else, what do you do? What, what are your services that you offer yourself? Um, especially during these, you know, uncertain times as well. Sure. Um, first of all, they are certain. Yeah. They are certain, right? We will get through this. I agree. And we'll come out stronger. Yep. I agree. We, um, to me, 
what's certain about this is for this one moment in our history, again, this is an opportunity to see that we are all equal. Uh, every single one of us, gender, race, religion, creed, whatever. So what I like to do is I give, I go into companies or corporations and I give talks, health and wellness. I'm an integrative health and wellness educator. That includes dietary lifestyle, like the conversation we're having here, doing things like teaching the benefits of ergonomics, the right chair, the right computer, the right keyboard. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do to improve your health where you spend more time than any place else, if you think about it, right? You spend approximately, the average person spends about 40 hours a week at work. And of those 40 hours, how much time do they spend in their chair, sitting at a desk, behind a computer? So there are ways to make that a healthier environment. I do that. I've, write, I've written a couple books. I've got a couple more coming. One of them is actually a children's book. And... Wow. I'm going to show you the title. I don't know if you can see it very well. This is our Spanish version. Can you see that? Yeah. How exciting. The title in English is called Tooth Ahoy, Pirate Pete's Voyage to Healthy Teeth. It's not really about teeth. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's really about trying to understand that we have, we can have an impact on the rates of childhood obesity and diabetes by doing some things a little differently. This time right now is that opportunity. So I've written that book. I've also written a book, which I'm, I'm redoing right now, just bringing it a little bit up to date. It's called Staying Healthy While at Your Computer. Tips and Techniques for Preventing Computer-Related Injuries. Wow. Something as simple, right? Yeah. Keyboards, do you know that keyboards cause your hands to be in an unnatural state, an un unnatural position? They're more, they should be more like this. Uh, can you see the hands okay? Yeah. But keyboards, most keyboards cause you to what's called pronate your hands or laterally bend your, hand, your wrists out. And what that does is it puts strain on the carpal tunnel area of the wrist because of that bent position. By putting it in its more natural position and elevating your wrist a little bit, you can cut down and possibly even prevent carpal tunnel syndrome. Wow. That's Simple awesome. little things. So I, I do that. Like I said, I give corporate and company talks. And I'm also with the new website, which is Dr. Just Dr. Dr. Mitchell Kirshner.com. And what, what's on there, there are programs people will be able to get involved with and they can be able to institute. I'm writing a program right now on a naturopathic approach to sugar detox. Nice. One of the things, because people are saying, well, you know, I don't usually eat dessert, but this, during this time I'm going to let myself eat dessert. Well, okay. But you're setting yourself up here. When we come out of this, we're all going to need some cleansing and some detoxing. Yeah. Right. So I've also written a program for a seasonal detox cleanse. In other words, four times a year. Um, based on history, st uh, if you look at traditional Chinese medicine and you look at uh, Ayurvedic medicine, these are four and 5,000 year old medicines. You think they've got something, they got it right after all that time? You think they got some hints on how to do things a little differently? We hope so, right? After 5,000 years, they probably figured a couple things out. That's right. Well, what I've done is I, I combined those philosophies with a form of healthcare that's even older than that called Mother Nature. There's a reason for the season. There's a season for each lifetime, right? So there's a reason that there's a winter squash and a summer squash. The nutritional ingredients in those two different squashes, even though they're both squash or they're cousins, they have different nutri nutrients. And there's a reason for the ones that you eat in the winter because they do different things in your body than the ones you eat in the summer. So my programs gear a lot towards helping you get back in balance with that. Wow, that's awesome. So the best way to reach out to you, you they just can go through your website, 
right? Yes. That's that's Mitchell, and we'll, we'll leave the information below. So you guys will have the website and you can reach out through there, correct? Yes, yes. And Dr. Awesome. Mitchell ND, naturopathic doctor or nature doctor. That's how I'm found. It can be found on Facebook or Instagram. But it, Kirsten, all I want to say in closing to your listeners is, this is a good time to take care of ourselves and take care of each other. This is a good time to remember our families. I mean, our elders, I like to call them elders, not the old ones, right? These are the people who carved the path for us to be here today. It's time that we reach out to them. I had my first zoom with my dad and his girlfriend and my sister up in New York. We were all on the zoom together. We were all on this had, we were able to communicate in a way together and see each other. I mean, this time is also a time where we're bringing families together. Yeah. So yeah. don't forget our elders. Don't forget That's those people right. in your life. That's yeah. right. Well, thank you to my listeners and thank you everybody. And thank you, Dr. Mitchell. It was awesome having you today. Uh, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks.